Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. We're gonna be doing a really fun video for you today. I am going to be testing out very inexpensive products in comparison to very expensive products. Of course, I was very limited into my options of which ones I chose. So it's gonna be more of a realistic type of expensive in comparison to like going really name brand type of products. So I hope you guys enjoy it. This is gonna be a very experimental slash educational type of video so that you guys are kind of more aware of what products you can use, how you can make them work, whether expensive products are worth it or you could just go the inexpensive route. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. Coffee break first. So I did go ahead and already prep my natural nails. I have done the pop-off method. If you're not familiar with it, I just slapped on a bunch of cuticle oil and then I lathered on some matte top coat, cured it, did two coats of that so that they are nice and thick and it protects my nail nicely. We are going to be adding my tips on top of that. That way I don't have to worry about soaking them off or anything like that. I do not want to deal with long nails so we're just going to go ahead and pop them off after the fact. But I'm very, very excited to be doing this. We're just going to be using the same tips throughout the entire set. I figured I would make it a little bit more simple and then I'll let you guys know my thoughts after I am done. This should be fun. I haven't had long nails in so long. Ooh. I've actually been using this glue a lot here at home. I kind of like it. It's like one of the preferred glues that a lot of nail techs use. So if you like this type of little bottle for your glue, definitely really recommend it. It's pretty freaking good. I'm also hoping that the pop-off method doesn't work so good that they pop off while I'm filing them. I haven't had that happen, but ooh, that has always been my biggest fear. Also, both of my ring fingers are really, really crooked. So I kind of have to pick and choose what way I want my nails to be straight. So you can see that it's like super crooked right here. But when I go like this, I could take a good photo like that. So. I'm gonna settle with not having them straight this way. So disregard the fact that it is crooked. Overly crooked, I should say. <laughs> oh my gosh. These definitely are way longer than I've done, right? <laughs> right? All right, now I'm gonna file them because I did a terrible job cutting these out with the old, in with the new. I'm making sure that I file right where the natural nail or the free edge is because I wanna make sure that they are super, super flush. Now, throughout the video, I'm not going to be telling you guys what products are what. We're just going to roll with it. And on the screen, we're going to be popping up A or B. Again, I'm not letting you guys know which one is which, but it will be saying whether I'm using product A or product B. And then at the end, we're going to reveal what product was which one. And y'all will be able to kind of guess. I'll be going over prices and all of that so that y'all can kind of get a glimpse into the inexpensive or the expensive world of products. Ooh. We're just gonna leave it like that. I'm so scared that they're gonna pop off before I even get to the fun stuff. For the monomer, I'm actually gonna be using my not polished one. The inexpensive one came with this much. So realistically, we're not gonna use that. We can't forget the neutralizer drops to minimize the smell and make it smell so good. I'm gonna do a quick little mix. Now I'm actually gonna move this off camera so that Y'all can't see what products I'm using. All right, we're gonna start off with product A and I'm gonna be taking 
this beautiful nude color and we are going to start working with it. So I'm gonna be doing an entire set of nude nails and then we're gonna be doing some fun nail art. I'm gonna be showcasing different type of products. So we're gonna be using acrylic, gel paints, and then colored acrylic as well, just so that y'all can get the real feel of cheap versus expensive products. So, so far, this color is really, really pretty. I also try to match the colors as best as possible. So if they look very similar, that's why. I wanted it to be like a very realistic comparison of both, so I tried my best. I'm just working from the tip upwards towards the cuticle area as I normally do. I always try to lay my products super, super smooth so that I don't have to do an insane amount of filing. I talk about this a lot on my videos. That is way too much. Girl, what you thinking? And then we just blend. My brush has some scraggly hairs. I gotta cut that off. It's gonna irritate my soul. And then last bead will be all the way up in the cuticle area and I'm holding it, cleaning my brush and then as the finger is all the way pointed down, we're going to start working that product into the cuticle and then just blending downward. Try to hold it as downward as possible and that should help a lot along with your liquid to powder ratio but if you're holding that finger down, that should do the trick.
All right, y'all, now that we got this one done, they look a little wonky. I haven't done long nails in a really long time, at least on myself, so I was struggling a little bit. But we're gonna go ahead and do the other hand, same process. I'm gonna be using the same monomer, same brush, everything, just switching out the powder. So we're gonna go in on my thumb here. And I am using it with my left hand. So this should be interesting. Um, as many of you may know, I am right-handed. So, which surprisingly, a lot of the time I've noticed that my nails actually come out better on my right hand for whatever reason. I don't know if it's like I get too cocky using my right hand and then it ends up being a disaster. All right, and I feel like I did a pretty good job matching these colors. This one's a little bit more pink, but I'm loving it. It's such a pretty spring type of vibe so again same process i'm taking about a medium sized bead of acrylic we're working our way up towards the cuticle area and i just hold this now is product b and then i'm going to tuck and blend pretty much the same process that i've been doing throughout my entire application and typically what i do with really any acrylic application Now the cuticle area on my thumbnail is always the hardest because the way that I have to hold it is really, really tricky for me to get up close but also hold it downwards while working on myself. Okay, that wasn't too bad. So far this acrylic is laying really really well it's not super runny it's like a good consistency and i'm able to really work that product it's not drying too fast it's not drying too slow i think it's like a perfect setting acrylic All right, now that we have both hands laid, I don't wanna take them off now because I feel like I missed my long nails. Shall I use my dust collector? I think yes. Now, if you're using one of these at home, make sure, or really anywhere, make sure that you like clear your desk of anything that can fly. <laughs> because it does filter out through the bottom and then the air is gonna go out through the side. So whatever is in sight 
on the sides are going to fly everywhere. So keep that in mind whenever you are using the dust collector. I'm gonna go ahead and start with filing my cuticle area and then I'm gonna hand file because I've been loving hand filing lately. So we're gonna go ahead and turn on the e-file to, we'll do 12,000. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. Product A so far files pretty good. I'm gonna go to product B. And we're going to go ahead and just try to not cut myself. Now again, for hand filing, we're going to go on the sides and then the surface area. I'm going to hold it nice and sturdy because I do not want these nails to pop off before I need them to. So opposite side, I'm going to hold it nice and sturdy. Square these off nicely. Same on the other side. Underneath, just a smidge in case I got any product under there. And then on the entire surface. Now we're gonna be doing the other hand, same process. We're just gonna file the sides and then the surface and then the tip lastly. dust that gathered I love it I will throw that away later I'm gonna go in with the lint-free wipe a little bit of young nail swipe clean the surface I'm gonna start off with product A once again, and we're gonna be doing a design that I kind of saw on TikTok. It's like a really, really cute spring design. So we're gonna start off with white. And I'm gonna start off with an outline. And then I'm actually gonna infill that using a thicker brush, per usual. I'm gonna dip back into my A product and then just infill the rest of that. So that's kind of the vibe we're going with. I'm gonna go ahead and do that on the rest of the nails. I'm gonna go ahead and pop these in the light now that I have finished all of this hand. Full 60 seconds, and then we're gonna do the other hand. 
All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and do the other hand with product B. And the reason why I kind of tried to do this design is because I'm gonna be doing nail art with my non-dominant hand. And the more perfect the design is, the harder it's gonna be for me to achieve using my non-dominant hand. So, play it safe. And we're doing pretty much like a simple but cute design. Ah. Don't forget to hold your breath. Okay. Gonna infill the rest. <laughs> what was I thinking? This is funny already. Round one. So we're gonna be taking product A and we're gonna be doing kind of like a swivelly, swirly type of checkered look. I love checkered type of designs. connected to the other side so we're gonna pretend like that line is connected all the way over here that one's gonna go up and then that one's going that way right okay checkered look we're gonna start in the center so right here Pretty much doing opposites. So we're gonna infill that. Dang, I twitched. Right here. And we're skipping. Right here. And I'm supposed to do this with my non dominant hand. Woo! Okay, and then the other one is going to go right here, correct? And then skip one, go right here. And then skip again, go right here. I think it looks funny because the color is just not giving. It's not giving crisp lines. Right here on this one. And then skip one, we're gonna go right over here. Okay, so that's what this looks like so far. All right, we're gonna do product B. This one's a little bit more vibrant. I tried to match the colors as best as possible, but it can get a little tricky sometimes. So 
we are going to do the same thing. I'm gonna follow one line first. So here. Okay, that is bright. Okay, now we're gonna go horizontal and bam. That is a lovely start. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing, start in the center. Okay, here, I'm gonna go ahead and finish off the rest of the nails and then we'll be back with the 3D portion. All right, so I went ahead and finished the design. We are actually going to be doing some 3D flowers. I figured I would go ahead and test it out with some 3D flowers. So we're gonna be taking pretty much like the similar color of pink for the flower. We can see how this one's a lot more like a peachy tone and then this one's like way more vibrant but it's completely fine. I figured you guys get the gist of the product. So we're gonna be going in with product A. I'm gonna be doing my regular 3D process. So we're just gonna be doing some little flowers, basic little petals, nothing too complicated. Starting off with one little petal and then I'm gonna work around with the rest. So I'm going to be taking a small amount and then kind of let the monomer soak onto that. Then I'm gonna place it where I want it to go, let it settle and kind of get its shape. And then I'm gonna put half of the brush out. And all you really have to do is kind of just press it right down the center. And then I do a little bit of tucking if it just goes all over the place. And then again, some pressing on the powder. Super, super simple. Little basic 3D flowers. The petal will form a lot easier as it dries. So if you feel like you're struggling and it's just going all over the place, kind of dab the back of the brush on a paper towel. That's gonna kind of get rid of the excess monomer and then wipe it again and then you'll be able to form it a lot easier as it starts drying and setting. So if you've been struggling with that, definitely mess around with it and see your options and what works best for you. And then I'm pretty much gonna do that on the rest of the nails. So another petal right here. Drain, drain, drain. And I like to twirl it so that it goes into a point. I feel like my 3D gets a lot better if I do that. Tuck in that side and then press again right down the center. So at this point, what hand do you guys think is product A and which one is product B? I feel like there's a few spoilers, but I still think like they kind of go hand in hand. I don't know. Okay, now next we're gonna go and switch over to product B. This time I'm going to put maybe one right here. And then we just press. Tuck and 
press. So cute, I love doing 3D flowers, they're just so adorable. And this is like the most basic type of flower you could do with 3D. And it just looks so cute every single time. You can always just let it sit there as well. Just let it dry out a little bit. And then once you start seeing it mattify, then you can press down that petal. All right, and as far as the center of the flower goes, we are actually gonna be taking the orange and just doing a small little dot in the center. Pop that right there. I'm going to go ahead and finish off the set and then I'll show you guys the finished result. We're going to go over prices. We're going to go over the results. All my thoughts. Let me know in the comment section as well what your thoughts are. <laughs> All right. So we are finished. Here is the final result. Let me do. I got paint everywhere. Let's see. This is what the nails look like. What are your thoughts as of right now? They are very extra and very vibrant. So I wanted to go ahead and kind of just break down all the prices from the inexpensive to the expensive products. Now for the inexpensive products, we ordered a bunch of stuff off of the website called Temu. So for the neon colored acrylics, these are the ones that we purchased. And of course I tried to match them to the expensive version as a little tricky to match colors, especially when you're going off of pictures from online. And then for our gel liners, we used this brand. There's no brand on there, but also from the website Temu. And then for our cover powder, this is not the McCart powder. That is just a container that I used to mix it in but also from the website Temu. It is in this container because I needed to mix it to match the other one. We have the Valentinos for the expensive colored acrylics. And then for our cover powder, I also used the Valentino one. And then for our expensive liner colors, we're using the Kiara Sky ones. And then for my top coat, this is the one that we got off of the website Temu. And then for our expensive one, I'd use my matte top coat from Not Polished. And then for my monomer, I just use my Not Polished one. This is the one that we ordered off of Temu. Did I wanna use it? Girl, no. I was terrified to get some sort of allergic reaction, some sort of anything. It does say EMA, which is the good type of monomer, but I wasn't gonna risk it. It was super inexpensive, and I just was scared, especially because I was doing it on myself. So I did not want to test it out at all whatsoever. For our actual like cover one, this is the container that it came with and I mixed a bunch of different ones of these in there. So I'll just set that here so you guys can kind of see a size reference when I am talking about the prices. So here we have the Valentino powders. These are 0.5 ounces and they are $10. That is kind of pricey, especially because we are able to get different brands that offer two ounce bottles 
for less than that. So definitely feel like it's expensive and it was the most expensive one that I was able to find. So that is what we went with. For the cover powder, this is a one and a half ounce container and it is $18. So for one and a half ounces, $18. Also think it's a little bit more expensive just because two ounce containers are available for less than that. And then for the gel art liners, these are $13 a piece. And that is expensive to me if you ask me, especially if you wanna have like a whole collection of different colors, $13 is expensive, that adds up. Now for the top coat. For the inexpensive version, y'all are gonna be shocked, okay? We did the whole rundown of the prices. So for the colored acrylic, these are a little over 0.5 ounces, so the same container size-wise. These are $1.79 each. So I paid $1.79, $1.79, $1.79. That is insanely cheap, okay? Now for our liners, these were also $1.79, which again, in comparison to $13, that is very inexpensive. And then our top coat was $3.48. And then for these little powders, these were, they say they're dip powders, but it also said that you could use it as acrylic. So that's why we got them. And I wanted to be able to do a cover powder for it. This was $1.34 for this little container. It is a little bit, but it's a little under 0.5 ounces and a dollar, you can't beat it. It's very inexpensive. If you're very tight on money and you just wanna start doing nails, that is the route to go. Now, I do wanna go ahead and quickly mention that we ended up using a 75% off discount code. Yeah, so these after the 75% off were 45 cents each. The liners were 45 cents each, and the top coat was 87 cents, and the dip powder, which was this, was 34 cents. That is why we went with these products instead of like going on Amazon or anything like that. This was like literally the most inexpensive version of products that I could find, which is mind boggling because what the heck, $10, 34 cents? That is crazy, that is crazy cheap. So. Now to give you guys my thoughts on all of the products. So the Valentino ones are Valentino. Valentino is deeply loved. I do think that their powders are a little bit on the chalky side for their colored acrylics, um, their pigmented ones, these. But I mean, they're still pretty good. Like I was able to work with them. They work really, really well. They're just a little bit more expensive than I would like them to be. And then the cover powders, I can't knock them at all whatsoever because they are bomb. The colors are really pretty. They blend very well. They work really, really well. So I can't knock them for that. The Kiara Sky gel liners, I do think that they aren't the best, especially for the price point. You can find other ones that are way better quality but they work as well. Now for the inexpensive version of it, the cover powder was very blendable. It didn't run, but it also didn't dry fast. So the setting was really, really good. The only thing that was weird or off about it was the fact that it dried in a shiny finish. Like it was definitely more shiny than what I'm used to. The normal finish of acrylic is technically like matte and slightly gritty, like porous surface. The one that I used for cover powder, it was very much so like a shiny finish. So that was kind of just really weird. As far as the colored acrylics go, I only used the pink one. So in comparison from the pink to the pink, it's definitely a lot more see-through, like the pigment isn't very opaque but it did its job, we got it done, it worked. It did spread, like as soon as I put the little bead down, it did like overflow, which I didn't like, but it got the job done. And then as far as the liners, they did spread a little bit, I will say that. Again, I only used the orange one, so the coverage was pretty decent. They cured perfectly, didn't have any issues with that. Um, the only thing was that they were a little bit on the like thick, side and they kind of like shrunk in on the edges if you know you know if you don't like definitely the more you try products you'll notice that they kind of shrink and it all bunches up in the center and then the outside corners of whatever you're doing will be very very see-through in comparison to the rest of it so 
Matte top coat also cured very, very well. The finish is really nice as well. Super velvety, definitely no negative thoughts on that. I would definitely have to like test the wear and tear of it. But as of right now, you can't beat the price and it worked really well. The finish is beautiful. Now for the reveal, the product A that I used in the video was the inexpensive side and the product B was the expensive side. So product A was used on my left hand and then product B was used on my right hand. So if you guessed correctly, y'all are good, but this one was the inexpensive hand. You can tell in the acrylic flowers that they are a lot more see-through than these. The color is definitely a lot duller than I would have wanted it to. The colored acrylic itself gave me a little bit more of a struggle, um, but this still worked. Like if you look at this set on its own, like that's still some pretty good nails. But then when you compare it to like something more expensive, you can definitely see the difference in quality. It's a lot more vibrant. The petals of the acrylic flowers are a lot more opaque, also very vibrant. There's no see-through to it. It's just all in all like really good. Like they go hand in hand. You can't knock the inexpensive version. So that's kind of why I always say if you do not have the money, don't worry about it. Get what you can afford, work with it. You can still do some bomb nails. It's just a matter of getting in that practice and then once you are booked up, you can go and purchase more expensive products. So that pretty much concludes the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned a ton. Let me know what you guys think down below. But other than that, I'll see you guys next time.